some stories are too good to be true. Well, this one fits that picture. It is so unbelievable that it's too good to be true. Now, over the years, we've heard of transgender people. We've heard of parents raising their little boys as girls. And we have heard of little boys wanting to be girls. But this story takes a twist. So, guys, as you come onto the page, please hit that like bell and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so as yet. Let's get back to the story. So David Reimer was a Canadian man born male and raised as a girl following medical advice and intervention after his penis was severely injured after a botch circumcision in infancy. You guys know you have a little boy, you want him to be circumcised. The doctors tell you, you wait a couple of months. You wait a couple of months, you take the child in. Well, he was eight months old. He went in for the circumcision with his twin baby brother. The mom took them into the doctor's office. And you would think, okay, this is very routine to take the foreskin off. But during the cauterizing of the tip of the penis to take the foreskin off, they accidentally removed the child's entire penis. So the mother decided with the doctor's advice to get these boys circumcised, these twin boys, because early on in their life, they showed problems urinating. And the name of that problem is known as phimosis, whereby the tip of the penis is so narrow that it's hard for the urine to come out. So the doctor decided and informed the mother it's probably best for them to have this circumcision so they can urinate better. And so she decided to go through with this circumcision. And I know some of you parents encounter that with your little babies, your boy children. You could not pull back the foreskin from the head of the penis. And even the doctor, you know, sometimes they can't do that either. So usually the recommendation is to remove the foreskin because it can lead to problems urinating as well as infections. Because remember, if you can't pull this foreskin back to clean around the tip of the penis properly, all that urine and bacteria will build up in there causing an infection. So the mother didn't have any problem with the recommendation. She took them in willingly because she understood that it can lead to a host of problems. So they were around seven to eight months old when the parents took them in to be circumcised. But what the doctor used was a method of cauterization. Instead of using a knife to remove the foreskin, the doctor instead used laser to cauterize the foreskin. The name of that doctor is Dr. Money. So this Dr. Money used this burning technique instead of a traditional blade. So after the mother saw what had happened to Bruce, that his penis was burnt off, she decided not to go forth with the brother for him to get the same technique done, the brother's name who is um, or was Brian. So here is their mother telling the tale of what happened when she took her twin boys in to get the foreskin of their penis removed. I wasn't worried about the boys going in for circumcision at all because I had been led to believe by the doctors that it was common, ordinary practice. And I didn't know I had anything to worry about. What they did was turn up the cauterizing iron to a high heat and burnt the skin. And it was as if there was hot flesh cooking. There was a sizzle. And a poof, and the penis was gone. A sizzle and a poof, and the penis was gone. Can you imagine being in that mother's shoe to see her little baby, but just born perfect in the world, that this doctor took away this baby's manhood, what potential manhood, because the penis was gone. So with a lot of apologies and a lot of regrets coming from the medical staff, the Reiner's after several months of just anguish, a lot of tears, they learned that there was a revolutionary way to restore this child. 
not to his former self, but to change his gender from baby boy to baby girl. I guess the doctors must have waited for some time, maybe for the family to be done with the mourning process and to be done with the crying process before talking to them again to see if they will be open to the suggestion or the idea of changing the gender of the child. So the family finally agree to the idea of sexual reassignment. And this little boy, Bruce Reiner, got this sexual reassignment from John Hopkins hospital. So mom said after a period of some years, the early years, like toddler to two, three, four, she noticed that every time she put on a dress on her little girl, this little girl would cry because for some reason, this little girl knew she was a boy in, inside. So she didn't want anything to do with little girly stuff. She wanted everything to do with little boy stuff because her little mind was already programmed to be a boy. The doctors at John Hopkins were very hopeful that if we had made a move towards making our Bruce into a girl, she could be successfully raised as a girl and she would enjoy a more normal life than as she would remain a boy. So the doctors at John Hopkins convinced the parents, yes, yeah, she's going to be happier. She is going to be adjusted. She will adjust. And so the parents went along with it, and they were satisfied that whatever adjustment that needed to be made, they are going to do to help their little girl transition from boy to girl. So the operation took place when little Bruce, now his name was changed to Brenda Lee, he was 22 months old when the operation took place. So he was completely castrated. Whatever stub was left of his little penis was completely cut off. They told me that uh, if we did not disclose the fact that he had ever been a boy, and we raised him to be a girl, but there was no reason that it wouldn't be successful. But doctors don't know everything. They don't know what's in the minds of people unless you tell them. So they were basing their findings based on the age of the child. The child would be adjusted and grow into this person, this new person, but it did not know what's in the mind of that child. So the mother recounts the first time she put a dress on little Brenda Lee, who was formerly known as Bruce. And I put it on her, and she started to tear it off. And I thought, oh my God, she knows she's a boy, and she doesn't want to wear a dress. Brenda went to the bathroom standing up like a boy. So although physically she looked like a girl, mentally her mind was already programmed boy. So she was doing everything boy. Although it was confusing for people and of course confusing for her as well. She did not understand why was she inclined to do boyish things when she should have been playing with Barbies or combing her hair or not wanting to play with the boys. So... Early on, she was very confused about her sexual gender and orientation. Although the parents, of course, knew, they did not want to disclose it early on to disrupt the process of this child growing into her femininity. Her twin brother also picked up clues as to exactly why is my twin brother so different from me. Now, folks, remember originally, the twin boys were taken in at eight months to the doctor's office because they had phimosis, this tightening of the tip of the penis, and the, the foreskin would not retract. And so the phimosis that the brother also had cleared up. And I know the mother probably was thinking, oh my goodness, I should have waited. Look, in the twin brother's situation, Brian, his phimosis cleared up. Had I only waited until Bruce got a little bit older, his would have probably cleared up also. I know that was going through that mother's mind. So here, 
we get to listen to Brian tell about his twin brother Bruce and what he noticed early on. I noticed uh, at a very early age, um, I would say kindergarten, where all the little girls would be, you know, playing with their hair and, and playing with Barbie dolls and things like that. And Brenda had, didn't want any part of that. She wanted to play with the boys. She, uh, she's not allowed in the girls' bathroom because the other girls uh, pulled knives out and they were going to stab her. She couldn't go in the boys' room for obvious reasons. So she had to go outside and, and go to the bathroom in between the schools and parking lot. How horrific for a little girl to experience that and to go through that. She could not go to the girl's bathroom because the little girls would pull knives out on her because I guess she was staring at them too much because inside of her mind she was a boy and boys stare at girls, all the little parts. And so she was forbidden to go to the girl's bathroom. And she couldn't go to the boys' bathroom because she was a girl on the outside. So what did this little girl do? She would go outside in between the cars on the parking lot and do her number one and I guess number two out there. How horrible. That must have been such a horrible experience for this little child. But what is so concerning to me that no teacher picked up on it. No teacher spoke to the parents to get a better solution for this little girl instead of her using the bathroom outside on the parking lot in between cars. Why did they not approach the parents and say maybe homeschooling would be best for Brenda? Perhaps the regular schooling setting is not correct for her because it's holding her back from learning because she has to fight every single day with these girls to use the bathroom in there. She couldn't use the boys' bathroom. So homeschooling would have been a better solution. But nobody approached the parents concerning that. She knew she wasn't a girl. She was told she wasn't a boy. So she was confused. She thought she wasn't it. And you know, it's sad, but it still continues today. A lot of young boys out there are trapped inside a body that they know they don't belong in and vice versa. And we don't know if some of those young people were once the opposite gender and maybe they had that gender reassignment for whatever reason and the parents are not telling them. We don't know. So... When Brenda was a young adult, her parents happened to be looking at a show on television and this psychologist was on and his name was Money, John Money, who specialized in gender identity and biology. So the parents reached out to him in hopes of trying to find a solution for the little girl. So Dr. Money came highly recommended. He was well respected. And so there was no reason for them to be alarmed at anything that he suggested at the time. So his theory was gender was not something you were born into, like you weren't born a boy or girl. It was something that was learned through upbringing and socialization. So he figured, okay, these two children would be a perfect specimen for him to test his theory. So the parents of... These twin boys reached out to this Dr. Money. They decided, okay, the meeting place would be at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. So after the meeting, the doctor had the parents convinced that it would be in the child's best interest to raise him as a girl. That means taking away the entire penis and giving this child estrogen to make this child's body transition from male to female. Oh. So Bruce was raised as a girl, and his new name was Brenda. And Brian, the brother, of course, was raised as a boy. So this gender reassignment took place at 22 months old, where his entire penis was cut off, testicles and all, and he was raised as a girl, given dolls to play with, had a nice little ponytail and pigtails and all of that. And for all intensive purposes, everything went well. He was going to grow into this girl body as well as mine, body and spirit, but that did not happen. 
Your parents did not tell neither boys what had happened early on in their life when they were babies. So these boys would go to Dr. Money yearly for a medical checkup for the doctor to keep track as to what was going on with them. In other words, the parents did not know it, but Dr. Money was experimenting on these boys because he had a social construct that where he thought that gender is not something that you're born with. It's something that is environmental and you learn. It's a learned behavior. So he pretty much was experimenting on these boys to see if his theory was true. And of course, the parents did not know. But I'm sure the doctor was quite surprised when little Brenda Lee was showing more masculine qualities than feminine qualities, which was proving him wrong that this theory that he had was not correct. There was more to masculinity than just growing up and learning how to be a boy. There was something that's really programmed mentally through that testosterone that they were trying to counteract with the estrogen. It wasn't working because it, the brain was already wired to be a boy. So Brandon was more interested in playing with everything boyish. Everything that had to do with boys, she was interested in but nothing girly. So by the age of seven, through these experiments on the boys that Dr. Money was doing, he would have the boys touch each other, look at their gender parts, and just to see if Brenda would react or not react and how the boys would react to each other because he was trying to prove this social construct was was based more on environmental learning of who you are sexually as an individual and not an innate genetic programming, meaning you were not born that way. You learn how to be male and female. That's what he was trying to prove in essence and in theory. But later on in years, the boys did reveal they were very uncomfortable going to that doctor. They did not like the experiments that he was doing on them. And they were very, very unhappy. And, but they did not tell anyone, including their parents. So at around the age of seven, Dr. Money instructed the parents and spoke to the parents about this gender. So it was around this time, at around seven years old, that Dr. Money introduced to the parents that maybe it's time for Brenda to get a vagina. But Brenda was very afraid. So the parents waited until Brenda was about a teenager, around teenage years. Then the doctor reintroduced it again to the parents and asked the parents to talk to Brenda to see if it's feasible at this time. Dr. Money also invited another patient who was transgender to have a talk with Brenda. So after that little conversation, Brenda disclosed to her parents that she would do away with herself if she ever saw that doctor again. And the mother said that was the last time the boys went to see Dr. Money. So here's the continued interview with Brenda Lee's mother talking to Oprah Winfrey about the last time the children went to see Dr. Money. And that last time had to do with gender reassignment where she would be given a vagina and this is what the mother had to say she rebelled she ran she ran on top of the roof of the building she said if she had to go see the doctor again she would commit suicide and that was the last trip and that was the last trip how horrifying to me that child's entire life was something out of a horror movie. So it was this time that the parents decided to tell the boys. Well, the boy and the girl. Brenda as well as Brian. Because things were happening so fast, Brenda was still confused with her gender. She did not know she was born a boy. And so because of re her reaction to getting a vagina was the matter of life and death that the parents said okay this is enough let's tell the boys everything and so they decided to tell the boys ron the father took brenda out for ice cream while the mom took brian somewhere else so they can ease it 
you know, just ease the news so the boys can, you know, just absorb all this news separately. And they wouldn't be so emotional, I guess, if they were apart from each other when they got the news. So after Brenda got the news, oh boy, she was so relieved to know that all these feelings that she was feeling for years can be explained. And now it makes sense that she was really born a boy. That's why she felt like a boy all these years. His brother, Brian, however, was not so happy. He was shocked that his sister was now his brother. This person he was calling sister for so many years, now he's got to just call him a boy and call him brother, which was so shocking that he developed schizophrenia. But Brenda, who was happy, changed her name to David and began to live her life as a boy. So here's the mother explaining. When Brenda finally got the news that she really was born a boy, she forgave them. When we told Brenda, we asked her forgiveness. And she graciously gave it to us. God has given her a very loving, forgiving heart. But it's another thing to forgive yourself. So the mother pretty much said that the parents were forgiven by Brenda. She forgave them for what she went through and what they did as a result for her to go through years of torture and torment but due to the circumstances she understood and she i would imagine she understood and she forgave them for it so as a result of the new findings the boys were no longer close as they once were because brian the brother could not wrap his head around his sister now being his brother. So he had a complete mental breakdown in terms of complete switching his mental psyche that he developed schizophrenia. But Brenda, who was once Bruce as a baby and now a young adult changed his name to David, was embracing his newfound self as a boy. He was making friends. He was taking testosterone to combat the effects of estrogen. Turn, he was trying to turn his body back to the masculine self. So over the years, because of the estrogen he was taking, he had developed breasts. And so he ha had to undergo a double mastectomy to remove both breasts. Also, he had to phalloplasty operations to recreate his penis. So living as a man, he eventually met someone that he fell in love with. He had three children with his wife. He was happily married in his relationship. And things started to take a turn when he heard that this doctor, this Dr. Money, was telling people that operation and this social construct theory was correct and it was proven to be right based on the findings with the twins. And so David decided to get together with his brother and speak out about what Dr. Money did to them and how the success of the surgery was nothing of the kind. And all everything Dr. Money was saying was false. So Brian agreed. And he and David decided to speak out against Dr. Money. And that's when the world heard what had happened to these twin boys. But unfortunately, back in 2002, Brian Reiner, his brother, David's brother, was found deceased after overdosing on an antidepressant medication. Because of the bot surgery, David was given a lump sum in a settlement, but he was conned out of $65,000 in a bad deal. So around this same time, he was having problems finding work, and his marriage was really in trouble. So his wife asked for a separation, which kind of pushed him over the edge. Because remember, he was still remembering his brother, the loss of his brother, because they were twins. They were close growing up. Although he and his brother were not as close, after both of them found out about this gender confusion due to the botchery of the circumcision, 
David still missed his brother. And so he was going through that along with this separation, along with not finding work. And so that kind of pushed him over the edge. So on May 2nd, 2004, David sawed off the edge of a shotgun, drove to a nearby grocery store, and ended his life. He was only 38 years old.